put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. I got this either as a present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Untraceable move for you. Perpetually rainy oregano origami Oregon. The cyber crimes department of the FBI handling identity theft and the like. Jen Marshall is played by Diane Lane, still immensely talented, and this was before she told Superman to screw Earth. She gives a really great performance. Along with her is Griffin Dowd, played by Tom Hanks' son. I know, he's done some... Yeah, Colin Hanks. Eric Box, played by Billy Burke. Mustache Dad. He is also in the fun but bad Don't Look Down, which also has a serial killer. Unusual name. Wasn't up to him. They are working together to find and stop whoever runs the site killwithme.com. A serial killer, or unless you're going by Saw Logic, yeah. Basically, he kills via the website. He live streams these slow deaths, and the more people who log on to watch, the faster the person will die. Both he and the movie are playing off the human fascination with gruesome violence whilst remaining detached, not technically directly causing it, but also not stopping it, which, you know, in theory, if enough people said, I'm not going to be part of this, and refused to watch, maybe even like told as many people you know, anybody they could you know, if you if you put online please don't watch this, it's not gonna be respected. But if you communicated to people you know and like get you know, maybe get some kind of organization involved that can really reach out and communicate to people, please don't watch this. In theory, that would mean that the person either dies, either doesn't die, or dies much slower, which is better. And the, you know, whether it's the, you know, the the movie watching audience or the people watching the site within the movie, you know, we, we watch on knowing that it's going to get worse. In the case of the movie watching audience, I of course mean we keep watching the movie knowing that it's going to get worse. That the it's going to get more gruesome. And of course tons of people watch, many leave comments, text comments, and some of these text comments are snarky. There's, at, at one point, the, the, the killer tells one of these victims, the whole world wants to watch you die, and they don't even know you. And as others have noted, really the, the implications of the, the, the film, and not just kill with me part, but the 
you know, other cyber crime stuff is far more horrifying than the film itself. And that is, you know, that's obviously not a very positive thing about the film as a horror film and psychological thriller and, and thriller in general, but it does, you know, at least the movie does have that going for it, that it does show some things that maybe not all of them, but some of them can actually happen and how serious it is and such. And it goes into hacking and online crime. It's ironic. This is actually one of the only things by Gregory Hoplet I've seen that has this kind of police investigation trying to, you know, yeah, that, that kind of thing, considering that the man is, you know, he, he came from TV where he did all these shows about police investigation. And this is the last Gregory Hoblet film I'm going to be reviewing, at least for now, these are the three that I own, and really the only that I've watched that I don't own, that I haven't reviewed here, is Frequency. And of course, as is the norm today the for, for this kind of villain, he has these impossibly excellent plan for everything kind of plans, you know, no matter how the the good guys try to fight him, he has planned counter moves and yeah. And as many others have noted, one of the biggest issues with the film is the hypocrisy. It you know, the the movie is saying that, you know, basically that, that we are awful for being willing to watch something that gruesome and, like I said before, watching on knowing it's going to get worse. Our fascination with it. And at the same time, it indulges it. It exploits this fascination. It is an exploitation film. You know, it, it takes great pleasure in showing us really awful things and, you know, basically what I'm getting at is if the movie could communicate that without also, you know, diving into, without showing so much of it and taking such pleasure in showing us it, that would be considerably better, or if the movie showed this but wasn't saying, you know, Saw, I've only watched the first one, but Saw 1 isn't saying, you know, people are awful for, you know, being fascinated with, and, you know, I'm not saying Saw is a good movie, but I will almost definitely not be doing videos on the Saw movies, even the first one. But yeah, it's 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 incredibly hypocritical. And yeah, as as part of it, the the movie shows this brutal torture porn and murder and Many people are going to watch the movie because that's there, to see that. And on the DVD, they, both commentary track and featurettes and such, they go, they gleefully detail these, you know, various kills. How they, how they figure out what should this kill, you know, what, what should the different kills be, the, the long hours that went into doing, you know, this was not snap decision and then, okay, that's, and then they left in the movie. This is, you know, it took a lot of time to do the, the makeup and 
get the whole thing right and they also make really gross dark comedy jokes. Most of these are about the stuff in the film but a few are of the real-life event that inspired this movie and I'm not gonna go into what that real-life event is. I will talk about it in the thoughts video but if you know what the real life event is, you it it pretty much spoils. Yeah. And yeah, as as examples of these kills, one is scorched with intense heat over you know a period of time. Another is sitting in you know I don't know how best great, but I I want to say it's it's battery acid up to his neck, so he's not you know he's not gonna drown, and it's not, but yeah, in time this will kill him. One critic notes that the voyeuristic quality to the movie made him feel like he needed a bath after watching. And, you know, talking about this hypocrisy does, of course, bring up, could you do an effective movie exploring human fascination with violence without showing this violence? Briefly, Sinister is another good, both movies, both Sinister films are a good example of, they're not saying, aren't we people awful for you know, watching this kind of gruesome, it's, you know, it's, it's exploring this fascination without really saying that it's off, the, the movie isn't directly telling the audience, you're awful for watching this. We, we sit and we watch as, you know, the, as the, protagonist of the film sits and watches this and we we kind of we feel that we shouldn't be doing it but the movie isn't explicit and and the movie is trying to communicate that of course but the film isn't you know pointing a finger at the audience and saying you're awful for wanting to watch this it's saying why does this kind of thing you know the, the, yeah, these are things that one could choose not to watch, but yet we do it, and yeah, it's not really making a judgment on that. Anyway, yeah, could you do an effective film exploring this fascination without showing any violence? Yes. The, the movie, before I state the title, the, the film is done by Alejandro Amenava, who is probably best known for Abra los Ojos, or in English, Open Your Eyes, which was remade into, and this is how people know about it, remade into Tom Cruise's Vanilla Sky. And if you haven't watched any of these films, Vanilla Sky is not the worst movie ever made. If you're going to watch either it or open your eyes, I would definitely say open your eyes. If you watch Vanilla Sky and you're curious, I would still say you're still going to really enjoy open your eyes. Anyway, the the film he did exploring this fascination is called Te Tesis in Spanish, Thesis in English, and in some of the Scandinavian countries, for example, Denmark, I bought it under the title Snuff. And, yeah, I, I'm not going to go into detail about it here, but that movie very effectively explores it without showing any gruesome violence. And it's not some kind of like, oh, well, they, they couldn't be... No, the movie is 
R-rated, and it's you know it's it's not like oh well if we don't show it then we can get away. No, it's an R rating, and the movie isn't. You know, it's it's not toying with... No, no, no. We know that that's what it's about. But it doesn't... Yeah. And it, it doesn't feel like a budgetary issue or anything. The, the film has things that definitely feel... No. It was very much a decision made so that the film... And it, it's made all the more effective because of it. Because of this decision... Because in the film, when you're told that there's gruesome violence, you as the audience member sits there and there's this, even though you know you don't want to watch this, the movie opens with someone dead on train tracks. This is not, this is, and, and that's something you could actually experience. This is something, you know, People die on train tracks. That's and you you sit there and you're you're anticipating that you'll you'll actually see and and you're sitting there and you're kind of like oh I don't want to see but yet there's still some part of you that you you don't you don't turn the movie off and you're not completely looking away from the screen and suddenly it it just it cuts off and you don't get to see the person on the train tracks in I forget if you there's maybe a tiny little you you start to see something and then you don't see anything and you're you're left there with this mix of you're, you're both feeling kind of relieved okay I'm not gonna see anything gruesome and there's this tiny part of you that's like but the movie said I would and now I don't get to and that is just the, the brilliance of that movie. And it, it does that with, with the violence in the film. You, you almost never see anything. You just know that it's what's going on. And it also gets your own you know, imagination going. It means you fill in the blanks. And it, yeah, the, the film never there's there's no big speech where it's like you shouldn't be watching this it just it admits that these you know it is exploring snuff films and it admits that snuff films you know although I if snuff films exist then why well it must be our fascination with violence and the movie you know uses this fascination without exploiting it and you know points to this fascination without pointing a finger and I, I have to admit even though this film is hypocritical about the message I do really appreciate the message I just wish that you know I, I don't I'm not unhappy that this movie exists. I wish that it wasn't hypocritical, but I do think that this message is, yeah, worth putting out there. And briefly going into why torture porn even exists, and I want to make it clear that this is not an excuse. I despise torture porn. I've watched almost none of it. I despise it based on it being a genre, based on the the fact that there are movies. If you're watching it, I don't hate you. I don't think you're awful. I just don't think that it's something that should be exploited. I, I, I love horror movies, and I love a lot of violent movies. You know, one of my all-time favorite movies is The Thing, the original. John Carpenter's. And, you know, that movie has a ton of really graphic violence. I'm not against violent movies, but I don't think that it's... I, I don't think we should feed the, the fascination with seeing someone in a lot of pain over time. That's different from seeing someone chased or someone killed in 
you know, a single, you know, when you, it's, it's a huge difference when you see, like, a slasher movie, and, you know, the, the slasher just chases them, you know, chases them for a while, and then when they get them, when, when they catch up to them, they very quickly kill them, which is, you know, for, that is kind of the, the slasher norm, that's very different from, instead of a chase, they've already tied them down. And instead of very quickly killing them, they have some kind of device or something in place that will kill them, or they keep threatening that they will kill them. You know, and yes, I'm also against torture in stuff like 24 and Alias. Anyway, the reason that it has become popular in, you know, from the early 2000s, again, 24, well, 24 is a torture porn, I wouldn't say, but, you know, these, these movies did start fairly early in the 2000s, and part of the reason is this you know, the, the normalizing of, normalization, anyway, of torture by the American state, not, you know, outliers, not someone who acted without being, you know, mock executions, there have been mock executions, but that's not something that the U.S. military is like, you know, I've heard of people who were like, dishonorably discharged for performing mock executions, so it's not like they have no boundaries, they're just, they are saying, they are actively saying, and have since 9-11, it is okay to torture, as long as you're sure that it's someone who's done something wrong, and you're sure, that, which they aren't even, but anyway, and you're sure it'll get you some information or something, which is always the excuse that sadistic people who want to torture are always going to say they deserve it, or it's the only way to get this information out of them. Anyway, yeah, Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo Bay, yeah, you know, the U.S. torturing people who haven't had a trial, much less a fair trial. But yeah, the, this is one of the only torture porn movies I've watched, and I only watched it because it's Gregory Hoblet. I, and like I said, I have watched the first Saw. Those might be the two only movies. And again, I'm not saying that you can't make a movie like this that is good from a technical standpoint. I'm not saying that you can't still, like, maybe some of them explore this fascination well. But I don't want to watch movies where part of the appeal is to see someone in great pain over time, or, yeah. And as others have pointed out, this movie is basically like Saw or Hostel. It's just with this kind of interaction by strangers and, you know, involving the, the media with it. And again, I do think that that puts it in a fairly unique position to, you know, it's created this scenario that I I haven't seen in any other, you know, yeah, movie or the like, where it can, you know, make the point, again, hypocritically so, that, you know, if, basically the movie is saying, if someone did try to do this, it would work. There would be enough people who would log on to watch that it, yeah. And the reason it's called untraceable is that the you know, no matter how much this division of the FBI try to trace where it is, you know they, they keep blocking, they keep excuse me shutting down the server, and then a mirror is you know put up. They they can't block people from going there. They can't you know. Basically, they can't. The only way that they would be able to stop the killer is to find 
the the you know yeah find the the actual physical location and stop him or you know maybe if they could convince people not to go and that option is explored some in the film as well and some people point out that this you know the the way the movie does it this idea that the site could be untraceable as just described that this is not realistic and you are completely missing point you you know you can point that out but you're just you're completely missing the, the point of the film the the writing serves the message which is hypocritical admittedly and the writing is definitely contrived to serve this message but it's not trying to be realistic I agree that the film is trying to convince people that it's fairly realistic but plenty of films do that that aren't realistic and weren't made to be realistic and yeah serial killer thrillers are often not realistic that's yeah, it's it's often this kind of these incredibly detailed plans and you know, yeah, all this stuff without you know, it's it's just that's not that common and in stories like this it's you know, not only does it happen, they're incredibly effective and you know, yeah, that's that's not realistic. Don't get me wrong, there are movies out there that do realistically explore serial killers. We meet the killer fairly early and he's very clearly identified as the, you know, it's not one of these where you, you meet a bunch of people and then by the end it's like, oh, all along it was that guy. No, you meet him and like two minutes later it's confirmed, yeah, this is the guy he is really creepy and the the individual gives a great performance but yeah it really does take the mystery out of it and a critic points out that in general the movie telegraphs all developments and yeah it, it very much does and you know this is one of those stories where Cops make stupid mistakes to facilitate certain school, certain scares. The some critics point out it's more kind of uncomfortable or off-putting than really like tense and yeah you know and, and it's and Grace point out it's easy enough to show the audience something that they find gross or you know that that we think of as that that we realize is gruesome that by itself is not that difficult and that is you know a telltale sign of a bad horror film is when the it's showing you things that get a reaction but it's just doing that you know it doesn't have good buildup for example or you know you don't really care about what's going on or something yeah and you know near the end we do have a Joe the explainer scene and the the, the script writers were or yeah, either they were and have now moved further ahead. Yeah, pre-med who applied to the script their detailed files on human anatomy. The production values were quite good, and the the look to the sets and locations. You know, they they put out on the commentary track. They put effort into making sure that this FBI office looked you know, a little appealing because it's just a bunch of cubicles and such it's gonna be kind of bland and boring and I'd say they did a pretty good job. 
and some of the computer stuff it actually does a, the, a, a good job of like it doesn't oversimplify them or make them too visual it just yeah it genuinely shows it what how it looks some critics say that this has homophobia I I'm not sure I really see it but I suppose there is one bit where I could see well, a, f a few bits that I could see might be the part but you know I, I I can't say for sure that the movie isn't at all homophobic. This has a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 52% audience score. So, and, and I do think that does tell you, you know, people who watched, you know, regular people who watched it and who weren't going by, well, how does this stack up against every movie of ever, every other movie ever made in the history of ever? People more or less thought, well, you know, it's not the worst thing ever. You know, if you just go by the 16%, that's like, wow, that's the worst. Batman versus Superman doesn't have that low score. And I would definitely say that this is a better movie than that. But anyway, it, you know, it's 24 fresh versus 123 rotten. And, you know, one critic points out the movie, it's, it's the film equivalent of a clueless old person ranting about how awful the internet is. And yeah, that's, yeah. And it definitely has some Sons of the Lambs 7 going on. And... One critic points out that Diane Lane goes without makeup and the like, and and how courageous this is of her, and I commend her. I think that it's it's noteworthy. The film actually it it shows her as strong and smart and capable. It doesn't feel like you know they just they. You know they're they're filling slots of like minorities. Okay, well we should definitely have a strong woman. That's a good. You no, know, she generally comes across as really deserving her job. But the movie does also show a number of times where she's intensely scared or you know very emotional and. It's, you know, it brings the, the portrayal a lot closer to being realistic. You know, that's, that is one thing that too many films, too much fiction that tries to be feminist, you know, goes so far against the, the women as, like, frail and weak and men as the strong ones, stereotyping that it actually ends up just having... All the women incredibly strong and, and flawless, you know, Mary Sue's, and the the men all weak and kind of, and that doesn't. I mean, if we have to go with one of those, if it has to be either extreme, I am in favor of the one that puts women as the entirely powerful, but it doesn't serve the the, you know. It, it leaves people thinking that, you know, it's, it's better to have realistic portrayals. And, yeah, in this one they get closer to that by doing that. One critic points out, originally this was called Streaming Evil, and that that really is the correct... You know that that has the schlock in right there in the title of the movie, is yeah, and it's you know of course again this you know a beautiful female cop kind of you know 
investigator, yeah, who's incredibly smart, is fixated on by a horrific killer. And some point out that the there's kind of babbling tech speak, and that the movie could be good considering the the themes of it. And one points out that the it's an overbaked concept, and that's yeah, that's very true. And and it and that the film basically it exists because they you know the 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 people who first thought up this concept thought it up, patted themselves on the back, and said, this is a movie. And really, if, if all you have is this kind of concept, and you're like, my job here is done. You know, I mean, they, they you know, more was written, you know, it's not just that, but the film, it's basically all centered on, okay, we have this concept, and with this concept, we can say that humanity's fascination with gruesome violence is awful, and that's it. You know, it doesn't really have, like, a really smart movie might have a short thesis written that they base it all on. And the, you know, parts of some of the, the writings clearly by people who don't know computers. And it does have the same problems that, you know, stories where computers are doing the detective work. Yeah. And the movie is, excuse me, 94 minutes, not counting the end credits, and 97 if you do count them. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.